Logic School of Management It is Symbol Logic Welcome to Logic School of Management presents Business Sense this is an entrepreneurial conversation during the COVID times. Uh, today, this is my first conversation. So I'm doing a Hari Shri here with uh, uh, a very eminent person, Rajesh Nair, who is the partner of EY India based at Bangalore. So one has to speak about Rajesh Nair. There is so much to speak about, but I'll just, surmise, I'll just uh, condense into very, very limited uh, thing for the audience to understand. Rajesh Nair is a partner with uh, EY. Rajesh Nair has very exhaustive experience of working in with Tata's group, with KPMG, with consulting, etc. He has worked, uh, he has been working with uh, EY for close to about a decade now. He has been looking after Kerala, Karnataka and, uh, and South India. Uh, fundamentally, he has been looking at uh, uh, the, 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 the market linkages, marketing and market linkages. Uh, in the process, uh, he had done yeoman services to Kerala, both at uh, governmental level as well as at entrepreneurial level. Rajesh has uh, contributed a lot uh, in Thai, wherein he went on to become the Thai Kerala chapter president. And uh, during his time, uh, Thai Kerala chapter went on to become the best chapter across the, across the planet, actually. So that was the achievement Rajesh Nair. Very committed person, very down to earth, and uh, always positive. If you have to ask me, what is Rajesh Nair? I am yet to find an iota of negativity from him, actually. And considering many people know that, you know, I'm a, I'm a very critical level of a person. So if I have to say that Rajesh Nair is actually all positivity personified, this absolutely, that is true. Okay. So uh, I'm going to talk to Rajesh Nair about uh, our current times, about consulting and about the future. Okay. Now, <clears throat> of course, my name is SR Nair. Uh, I am an entrepreneur, an adjunct professor, an author, and a, and a mentor. Okay. Rajesh, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. As I've told you, I'm doing my Harishi of this show with you. Mm -hmm. I really feel privileged. Uh, you, you have uh, both been a friend and a colleague, and many instances, uh, uh, many instances an advisor too. Okay. Uh, and I keep you at very high esteem. Uh, the, we at Kerala had uh, gained a lot out of your competence and experience, as well as uh, as well as the fraternity the, that is particularly the entrepreneurial fraternity that to the SMEs and startup had immensely gained out of you. Rajesh, <clears throat> just to say, we are going through very bad times, and uh, we don't need to explain it. Simply saying that COVID times that itself will will take care of uh, the whole thing. It uh, the essence of what we are going to say. So now. Uh, my question is, you know, as an EY person, as a true professional, as a person who had been watching the industries uh, about the countries, about the global trade, the global commerce, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, and, and the growth of it, etc. One year back, did you ever think that planet will go through such a horrific uh, experience? I think uh, completely un, uh, you know, uh, Nobody would have nobody would have uh, predicted anything of this sort happening. And why one year, even six months back, or maybe even uh, three or four months back, we would not have predicted that uh, you know something like this would happen. Okay, now let me ask you a little deeper into that. See, you work for another top four consulting houses in the world, and EY is a very reputed name at that. Now, EY as an organization. In its, in its wisdom, did it ever think that a scenario like this will happen ever? So I think even, um, no, I speak for the, the firm as well. So we didn't, we didn't have any, uh, we, I think the, early, uh, the earliest inclination that something like this could possibly happen is when we started getting travel advisories uh, towards the end of uh, January, saying that, you know, some of these countries uh, have uh, you know have the corona the covid 19 uh, you know spurt and you should uh, you should be careful when you plan your travel there this was uh, late january and, and then of course in february we uh, you know 
uh, the news is uh, started getting confirmed and then it spread across to countries so that way uh, from a risk management point we were slightly earlier we even did the internally we uh, we got people to work from home much before uh, uh, the country went into lockdown okay okay so there was yeah at the, at the early stages because i believe it is in end november and uh, december that actually it came into being at uh, wuhan Uh, though yeah. there had been some some confusion about uh, reporting etc etc happening and that by 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 end december and beginning january they said uh, this is actually uh, this is now getting into an epidemic and even at that time uh, the the basic communication through who was that it will not go through uh, it is it will not spread from human to human but then later that also has happened it is only by march 13th that uh, who actually declared as a pandemic so mm. from a perspective rajesh do you think uh, that who actually delayed uh, announcing the pandemic or is it do you think or it was right of them to basically observe everything all angle and then declaring it's a pandemic so some of these um, you know so i'm not competent to you know uh, to judge as well sir so uh, first of all you know who is not uh, you know it's not a organization at least i work with personally yeah and uh, some of these medical decisions we you know, i at least um, i have i'm completely incompetent to comment and i don't even know what are the parameters they look at and you know how they will uh, declare something as a pandemic etc so uh, i have very limited view on this okay uh, i have taken that way now there is another way of looking at it, rajesh if you really look at it, the europe that too the, the rich nations of europe as well as the us of a the way it which it has actually exploded into the into these countries and the way and the and the helplessness that uh, most of this nation had shown in managing this virus and the and the death that has happened uh, one could not surmise that it could happen in this manner particularly at these developed nations you know what went wrong in your in your observation in these nations again so um, i sort of have to sort of qualify that this is completely you know my take on the whole thing it's not yeah. the Yeah, it's not the firm's those, opinion. Yeah, okay. It's not the EY opinion. Okay. So I think uh, I think we all took it a little lightly to begin with. Okay. And then um, and once it started happening, um, I think even things like lockdown, etc. A lot of countries didn't want to do it, and and maybe the thinking at that point of time was you know livelihood is more important, and uh, you know how um, how dangerous can a virus be? Was, you know was the was the question, and you know we are all these. we've had many many such spurts in the past but we have uh, you know ably overcome this and even if they say that uh, the the ability of this virus to spread is far uh, you know far more virulent and you know far more capable we still uh, you know we still will not get affected so i think there was a sense of uh, uh, disbelief and a sense of uh, sense of lethargy in yeah. probably getting into very strong steps and hence probably you know some some of these places lost time uh india i would say there is a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, heads up we got because you know we, we started uh, having cases and we sa- we started having spurts after we saw some of these countries uh, having you know critical so probably we we took a slightly more conservative route and uh, you know started uh, you know the, the lockdown etc came in uh, immediately Uh, at the onset itself because you know because at least maybe that's what the uh, the government decided at that point of time that you know we need to be proactive and just close down everything and you know let's focus on the the medical side and the lives now just still even though many of the countries or almost all of the countries except for some scandinavian nations like uh, sweden norway etc most of the nations had closed down or they have locked in Uh, including usfa but still there is a very strong thought prevailing upon some of the nations including us that uh, the the business should open up and uh, lockdown should go away and uh, uh, it is business uh, that matters and if it doesn't happen the whole country will go bankrupt and uh, come down what, what what do you what do you think of the, this particular view that okay things have to open up even before the pandemic is actually contained or broken or, or the curve is flattened and things like that so i think it's that classical um, debate which is happening in these times in terms of you know what um, how important is uh, lives over livelihood even if so uh, perhaps at the cost of uh, livelihood going or i we should still uh, conserve uh, more of more of lives and you know prevent some of those things so that debate i think different countries would have had, taken different directions depending on the leader, respective leadership in those countries and some countries also had an opinion that you know 
uh, what is life after all if there are, there, are, there is no livelihood which is you know uh, which is available one month down the line and hence yes. uh, some of those you know uh, a lot of lot of countries have not really taken the hard route for uh, lockdowns and you know they still have some economy working while uh, you know some some parts of it is closed okay not the firm's view what is your personal view on this is it lives or livelihoods no i i think uh, i think it's both i you know i don't think we can you know i can take a uh, this is not a uh, this is not uh, this or that kind of a situation i think you know it has to be a fine mix of both so both and, matters uh, i know immediately i think lives is lives is the first priority uh, if you ask me that's my personal thing yeah if you ask me i think lives is what uh, you know what we should take care of immediately and uh, the livelihood in between if i had to choose one at gun point then i would probably choose you know choose lives right now right okay now many of the organization including yours too had come out with many suggestions and many advisories and uh, many uh, very deep studies onto this and then there are predictions about what and when and how and uh, how to contain and when to get over with that so what is your what is ey's view about uh, the pandemic uh, dipping or the pandemic uh, management and control so um, uh, the firm is not given a uh, rather there is no press release or you know any any for, uh, any public statement in terms of when uh, when the pandemic will ease and things like that and then i don't think because there is a you know there is a medical aspect which we can't predict so there is no um, there is no advisory on that side which we have given what we have given is um, given the current situations and some of this is very uh, very contextual in terms of a day to day basis so okay. uh, our internal uh, internal emailers and in term, uh, the opinions that we give to clients is also very contextual in terms of this is what i'm telling you on april 28 mm-hmm. and uh, this is based on what we know today and whatever we are doing we are doing it in three uh, whatever advice we are giving we are giving advice uh, advices in three frames what you need to do now as a firm yeah. what we need to do next uh, and then what do we need to do beyond so something very which is very immediate which is let's say you know right now to probably a month and then the next uh, phase is probably in the next quarter or in this quarter and then beyond is after that one quarter you know how to you know, uh, what is it that you would require to do and that you mind the, saying it okay is it uh, is it something confidential in nature or do you have no, no, you no, no, so yeah. that's a framework we use for even advisors okay so okay. wherever uh, wherever it is you know the, the broad view is you know we look at uh, we look at now which means it's about responding to the crisis as companies focus on you know the business continuity and crisis planning so right right now it's about just keeping the lights on and how do we how do we ensure safety of people etc and then that's what and the business continuity uh, any crisis to be mitigated etc that comes in the the now part the yeah. next part is largely about managing uh, you know a restricted business we are restricted from multiple regions and how do we uh, lead through when uh, you know during this ongoing disruption okay. and beyond of course is that frame where we are saying that we have to bounce back from these challenges and build a very resilient enterprise for tomorrow and we need to probably even reframe the future and uh, f- figure out what is the best way to uh, you know what is the best way to go forward so again i think to put it bluntly right uh, if you you know if i uh, the kind of conversations i have with the team also is use this time to probably you know slow down a bit connect with uh, you know connect with clients and make sure you know uh, make sure they they well is there something that we can do to them uh, do for them during this time phase and keep building your muscles and you know keep exercising for the time when it really takes off so that when it you know when things become normal and you take the first of the block okay and you are you know you can really uh, go faster than you know some of us, many others at that time many of the consultants and many of the experts are saying that okay we have to now look at the world as pre covid and post covid you subscribe to that view Uh, there could be some changes uh, yeah i mean uh, there is some logic in some of these things for example uh, i think this uh, the entire impetus which globalization was getting will uh, you know people will start uh, thinking twice okay. whether uh, you know globalization uh, vis-a-vis uh, uh, building a sufficient you know building a self sufficient nation is more important than globalization okay where we are not overly dependent on uh, supply chain uh, crises and supply chain risks of, you know as like what we are seeing today so if it's a localized supply chain would it re- reduce our risks going forth etc so 
some bit of um, deglobalization if i may uh, is something that uh, companies will look at so there there could be you know there is a you know pre pre and post covid um, uh, post covid kind of situation a lot of things um, even in terms of i think one of the immediate aftermath also would be about uh, about spends we'll you know we'll enter into a region where uh, probably we'll take a slower look at uh, anything which is um, not you know there is a there will be a clear demarcation between uh, discretionary and uh, non discretionary spends okay like, you know my uh, as you know i come from a fairly middle class background and my father used to say that you know uh, whenever you look at um, your monthly income and your savings um, you know normally what we follow is uh, your monthly income minus your expense is what you eventually have as savings and then yeah. you know savings is whatever is left as savings and he always used to say that no that's not the way you should look at it you should look at income minus savings and that savings needs to be a particular percentage or a particular number and then if there is something else then that should be what you should live your you know expenses your means with. should be with the with that so yeah within the means great I, i really appreciate the perspective so probably you know while you said the middle class sentiments etc actually but it was a very wise decision tell a wise uh, sort of a concept telling people that okay look at life with this banner okay saving must be a fixed factor The, the the variable factor should be the expenses that you do right yeah uh, that's great okay now coming to uh, see we have heard i recently have heard that okay virgin atlantic australia had closed down 60000 people have lost their job with the first wave and there are so many other organizations actually are on the verge of collapse that bigger bigger larger larger organizations you can think about smes which is going to be very very tough time because pre pre covid also smes had gone through some very tough times like demonetizations and challenges of uh, gst and then the and specific to kerala and some other part of the country floods and things like that now this covid so if you really look at it uh, uh, do you i mean is it going to be ground zero upwards post covid or do you think that okay there will be some via media that they will find to work upon post covid time as far as sme uh, business is concerned so uh, as you said earlier so i tend to uh, take a fairly optimistic view here and okay. i would i would still think that you know uh, if they have you know if, if they manage to survive this time and if they you know if they just keep strong during this time they'll you know there is the economy will boom up this is this is not a permanent situation and that's what any um, any situation has shown in the past we've had a lot of these um, you know a lot of these diseases in the past as well as you know as old as the spanish flu which is close yeah. to 100 years back yeah 100 years back. and then, yes. yeah and then several uh, several of these outbreaks which came and uh, the world uh, you know the world sort of recuperated in a much faster fashion i mean the the recent uh, a lot of people say that you know a lot, i heard a, a lot of uh, economists write that uh, the sars thing which happened in china sort of in, gave impetus to the entire online uh, e-commerce you know e-commerce yeah. in china and even a company like alibaba was born out of you know that particular crisis all right okay so uh, likewise uh, i'm sure a lot of these uh, companies will uh, you know find its feet that is one year so yeah thank you yeah one year so about a lot of uh, new normals you know including simple things like namaste and mass and going up to uh, the social distancing and e learning and e commerce and deliveries and uh, all those things you know so Uh, some of those uh, new learnings or new normals it is expected to stay for a longer duration and some of them may actually die away after some time what is your view on some of these new normals rajesh so i think uh, in the immediate future you know the masks and social distancing may be you know maybe the norm and especially where uh, you know when you're when you're moving in public transport and when you're in uh, in situations where there is a lot of density of people you will be a lot more careful than what you were earlier so that's definitely okay. there i think one area uh, which could be there is this entire work from home uh, yeah culture i think um, now um, organizations are looking at that as a reality so which also yes. means they they will look at business models where why don't we start looking at uh, support functions uh, functioning out of their own homes or, you know coming to office perhaps one day a week or two days a week some of us were calling it flexi timings especially for uh, you know for helping uh, some of the women employees to uh, settle at work but uh, that is something which we will uh, we will progressively see so uh, some of the uh, some interesting conversations we are having with clients also is on that side where 
they they are saying that okay suppose this becomes a reality uh, and you know large financial institutions and large companies with you know lots of people they're saying that you know let's start looking at a model where and uh, you know you yourself would have i mean i've heard you speak about gig economy quite a lot yeah that's what i was going so, to yes yeah, yeah. Uh, so the entire gig economy etc it's been a people have been uh, on that you know i don't want a complete employment but i want the freedom to work for multiple organizations at any point of time which is like an extended uh, consulting kind of work style yeah, yeah where i say that you know i'll work probably 6 months a year and 6 months i'll do what i want and whatever so some of those things i guess will stay back uh, the conversations we are hearing is also the the it impact of all this so you know right. so we are if we are logging in from home you know i may be looking at it i may be uh, logging into my company for the uh, company network from a mobile at times or yes. from a laptop at times so there yes. there is this entire um, work from home security issue which has to be looked at so cyber and some of these things will you know will take a, lo- a lot of impetus i think uh, you know as again you know, one of those whatsapp groups which we saw in our groups was you know which is the uh, this entire digital uh, the impetus which digital got has been because yeah. of this entire virus and people are now looking at digital solutions everywhere right so the, i this a there's a small flip side to it is a flip side to it actually i also have been talking to many of these employees particularly women and they find okay it is a cultural change and they are undergoing a cultural shock because they have been always working at home some of them in it had been used to working so working at home otherwise they were always working at the office you know here there's a situation that is emerging where the women are expected to do both office work as well as the home work and then looking after a lot of people inside the home during this lockdown period etc which is creating some level of a stress on to them Uh, what is your view on that is it will it, will it continue or will it be surmounted over a period of time what do you think um, i think it will um, i i hope it will get uh, surmounted and uh, very frankly you know um, looking at the young workforce uh, at least i see my teams and you know i see a lot of uh, people in our teams where men are also equally uh, you know helping out uh, yeah. you know with with some of the domestic chores and uh, i think uh, probably it will also bring in uh, you know bringing that that amount of you know sharing of work at sharing home as well yes. yeah, yeah sharing i hope it will happen uh, yeah maybe you know if if you are if you've not been doing something for 40 years of your 50 years of your life it's a, yeah. it's a difficult transition but i i at least i see a lot of uh, and i see a lot of senior men also you know people who are more than my age also sort of helping out at home and uh, oh yeah i do <laughs> nah, yeah. not that i am forced to do but then uh, it uh, i know essentially it is a question of an understanding as to what is the time that we go through and then we yeah. have to take care actually and particularly Absolutely. when we have uh, suppose the members go up or we have more work to do then then it, if you don't share that then it's going to be a uh, tough situation as far as a lady of the house is they call it loh lady of the house is concerned yeah. okay yeah. yeah rajesh now coming to coming to consulting so uh, the, during the covid times does consulting go at the same pace or consulting also at suffered as other industries etc uh, so so of course you know um, if you look at the overall pace uh, since the economy slows down um, you know consulting will also sort of um, slow down to uh, to some extent okay um, but then it's also an opportunity um, opportunity for us to help a lot of clients yes so uh, you know so so we see a lot of clients and we see uh, clients across industries yes. one of the first reasons you would hire a consultant is because uh, he or she has uh, more exposure of more firms uh, even okay. within the sector and outside the sector okay and some of us are able to bring in that experience of different sectors into a new sector okay and uh, you know you, you use some of that experience to um, you know enhance value and create efficiency and all that so because of that so the conversations etc is, is increased um our kind of consulting work uh, some bit of work from home is also possible so okay it's possible for us to so um, like progressively i am seeing clients becoming extremely comfortable with these online uh, you know meetings yeah where you know people come on to microsoft teams or zoom and uh, the, our yeah thing. our ability to manage some of these conversations which we thought was never possible if you were sitting uh, in a different city is now and uh, these are not very complicated tools yeah. so you know we are not using a telepresence or any such complicated tool but we are just using a normal vc and a lot of serious discussion and serious uh, decisions get uh, taken as well so that's a that's a good um, sign even for a consulting kind of uh, you know environment 
Yeah, Rajesh, what are the new normals that is going to be in consulting after this? Is it, will that be having certain new normals in consulting? As you said, there is one, one is work from home, which you said, and second, you said that a lot of meetings, which will become online. Any other new normals that you see, which will impact the consulting industry? So I think uh, uh, one of those things is, you know, this entire business strategy, uh, you know, we used to say that, you know, look at business strategy, you know, look at a five-year strategy and 10-year strategy, you know. So because of technology, all those, that number of five, you know, five years, 10 years was anyway getting shortened. Yeah. Now I think you'll have to look at uh, even shorter cycles in terms of your business strategy. Uh, business continuity planning is a, you know, it's something, it's a new subject. Okay. Probably, I mean, a lot of large companies had, uh, you know, had some, you know, had discussions around it. But uh, whoever has not taken it seriously will now take it seriously. Everybody will look at contingencies and, you know, how do we manage during contingencies, Kerala, uh, you know, the two floods and even before that, a little bit of Nipah uh, onslaught, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are we are sort of uh, now getting very clearly onto the business continuity planning sort of uh, frame. So that will again be another uh, new normal within uh, within organizations, and uh, at least for the for the short period, as I said, you know, the you know what is discretionary and what is not discretionary. Uh, will definitely get debated in a lot of organizations. As a person and as a professional who worked long in Kerala and also helped a lot of people in people and organizations in Kerala and also part of uh, many professional organizations in Kerala, uh, you see, do you think that uh, a, a major uh, changeover or major change will happen in our uh, our business environment or will it continue like that? What do you, What is your thoughts on this? Um, in terms of a huge, um, you know, huge change, it may, you know, there may not be a very large change which is happening. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really hopeful that a lot of, you know, we'll come out with some positive lessons. Uh, we'll start becoming a lot more financially prudent when we look at our books and, you know, um, yes. balance sheets and all that. Okay. Um, whoever was not looking at cash as an important, uh, you know, item will now start looking at uh, cash. Okay. There will also be, uh, people, you know, a basic thing which will happen is, you know, people will start looking at pivoting some of their business models to ensure that the cash cycles are shorter and, you know, they get um, some of the money that they get. All these, um, all the startups Rajesh, will... one second, there's a challenge, you know, so when I see as a, as a seller, when I want to reduce the cash, cash cycle shorter, as a buyer, you would like to expand the cash cycle la larger. So how, where yeah. do we find a buyer media into this? So again, um, I, I don't think there will be an answer, sir. It will you know, it'll be, like uh, it'll be like a constant negotiation in terms of how uh, the buyer and seller handle cash. So uh, it will it'll always be a negotiation now. And something that we, we didn't think about uh, earlier yeah. you know, will definitely be at the top of the mind when we negotiate deals. So okay. we, would want, you know, we would want to have an upfront idea on you know, how much cash is coming in, when is it coming in. If it is milestones, uh, how do I prepon some of the milestones and you know get cash faster? We one of the competencies that Kerala has had was the the tourism industry, which is linked up to travel. And as you always been speaking, it was a force multi. It is always a force multiplier. But then yeah. that is going to suffer a lot because travel is going to be restricted. Therefore, tourism also is going to be restricted, isn't it? So, what do you think? Because Kerala is one of the Kerala's the revenue streams to be that other than the money order economy that we work upon. That also is going to be suffering. Now, do you think on the will will there be a shift that is happening? Uh, on Kerala it's to move into agriculture or we will not move into agriculture because we are always this intellectual workforce sort of a, or intellectual level of a thing that is uh, within the minds of uh, an average Malu. What do you think? I, I'm hoping that we will uh, we will start using a lot more technology in agriculture than what we were using earlier. Okay. So the entire agriculture um, part will get some bit of impetus and as I said we are looking at self-sufficiency now. You know, there were, there were times when uh, we said that vegetables are not available in Kerala because you know because of cross border movement being stopped, and uh, we don't make some of these vegetables, and hence some of these vegetables are not available. Yes. So uh, I'm sure a lot of intelligent uh, entrepreneurs and agriculturists will start figuring out you know how to make some of those vegetables and fruits in Kerala. Okay. Uh, see, what tourism, about cash crops? Cash crops like yeah, uh, of course, Scott, cash yeah. crops, and you know we'll have to see how you know how uh, the Kerala state you know. Does Kerala state look at uh, agriculture as an industry now? It was never classified as an industry, but yeah. to give it that um, respective uh, industry focus, will they will they classify it as industry? 
and on the tourism okay. part see we have seen a very intelligent uh, very uh, uh, you know very interesting take after the last big floods the amount of tourism yeah. tourists we had in kerala was much higher than you know in, in a similar period in another year so yeah. i am also hoping that um, you know the tourism will also sort of revive itself uh, in full uh, you know in full flurry and um, yeah. of course if they will uh, some of the tour you know some of the you know, you know a lot of entrepreneurs who are in tourism in kerala some of them are extremely intelligent and i'm sure they will uh, their ref- business models will also reflect that kind of far thought into you know how to sustain tourism in the future as a final parting um, comment or parting advice to uh, uh, sme entrepreneurs as i mean early entrepreneurs as well as to startups you have any specific suggestion or advice to make rajesh so i think um, see startups um, or, i don't think there will be any dearth of funding um, you know it may it may sort of uh, go a little slow right now because um, the existing uh, funds would st- you know also want to look at what is happening to their existing investments so they would they would want to help places where they have already made investments and sort of buckle up uh, those companies first yes but um, you know uh, investment money always looks for good paper and when i say good paper i mean good companies good companies with good business models okay uh, i'm sure a lot of new business models will emerge and entrepreneurs should not be uh, should not shy away from pivoting if they feel that you know they they have a uh, they have a business which is not yielding results in such an area or is is at high risk when something like this happens okay even um, at some small level even the smaller smes and msmes and uh, startups should look at things like business continuity planning you know what will happen next and you know how and uh, cash you know we were we were very um, you know i i still don't understand but a lot of people were saying that you know um, i made so much of losses so i'll make money and you know mm-hmm. my valuation should be xyz and my cost of acquisition is and i can be negative and people that mindset of you know i can be negative uh, for another 10 years and then get funding and all some of those things will have to change will have to change okay yeah rajesh it has been and you are a very prolific speaker and uh, i can continue speaking with you for hours and hours together and just you know we say that it just flows in uh, but for this interview which since we have thought that it is going to be a limited one uh i would uh, uh i would like to close it here uh, it has indeed been an immense uh, pleasure as well as privilege from my side to have uh, undertaken this uh, interview with you i wish you all the very best and i'll keep uh, seeing you around thank you very much sure. and good night thanks a lot sir thank you take care bye logic school of management it is simple logic